How's it going, folks? Uh, well, I'm about liquored out for now, so I'm going to just stick to uh, stick to the brew. Not much to drink to in this chapter if I follow the old rules, but being the rebel that I am, we're going to drink to repentance. How about that? He overuses a word just a little bit here. This is the, I believe, the conclusion of Alma Jr.'s uh, lecture to Cory Anton that just sort of goes all over the place, but mostly repeats itself. You know, resurrection and wickedness. <laughs> all right. Chapter 42, Masthead. Alma to Cory Anton continued. Justice and mercy expounded the tree of life. Mortality, a period of probation. Spiritual and temporal death. Repentance. Hey, I'll drink to it in a mass, dead. I don't discriminate. Oh, that's nice. Uh, repentance, atonement, law, punishment, all necessary. All right, verse 1. And now, my son, I perceive there is somewhat more which doth worry your mind. So you got to stop using it. Use your heart. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear. So you want to listen to it. Your mind just might trouble you with questions. Which ye cannot understand. Which is concerning the justice of God and the punishment of the sinner. For ye do try to suppose that it is injustice that the sinner should be consigned to a state of misery. Two. Now behold, my son, I will explain this thing unto thee. For behold, after the Lord God sent our first parents forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground. Yeah, they needed people to plow in Eden. From whence they were taken, you know, the dirt. <laughs> Well, she was a rib, but still came from the dirt. Goes back to the dirt. All right. Yea, he drew out the man, and he placed him at the east end of the Garden of Eden. Yea, he drew the man out, and he placed at the east end of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the tree of life. Okay, this is where they got uh, yeah, evicted. I say, drew out. Usually they mean cast out, you know. <laughs> Usually that's what they say. All right, drew out. They drew them out. What they do? How about like one of those, uh, you know, one of those toy grabbing games, you know, which for a dollar, you know, the claw that comes down. I mean, what? Drew out. Trying to make it sound nice and archaic, aren't you? All right. Three. Now, we see that the man had become as God, knowing good and evil. Yeah, that's such a bitch. <laughs> knowing right and wrong. And lest he should put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. The Lord God placed cherubim and a flaming sword that he should not partake of the fruit. You know, because magic fruit, you could have gotten some superpowers. It's like Dungeons and Dragons, you know, magic items and stuff. <laughs> I think that would have given him, a, what, a plus 
12 to Constitution. If, you know, I don't know what that is. I forgot. Dungeons and Dragons talk. All right. Four. And thus we see that there was a time granted unto man to repent. Mm. Yea, a probationary time, a time to repent and serve God. Same verse. Five. And behold, if Adam had put forth his hand immediately and partaken of the tree of life, he would have lived forever. Like God... Couldn't have done anything about that, huh? I mean, yeah, all right, yeah, you put a... You put one of these guys, uh... <laughs> Aw, isn't that cute? You put one of these guys... And a flaming sword. Plus 12. With damage. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> God could have just fried him if he made the whole goddamn everything. Oh, you got magic powers? <laughs> but that's not what Joseph Smith seems to think. I mean, Alma Jr. He would have lived forever, according to the word of God. Having no space for repentance. Wait, he lives forever, but he won't have any time to repent? Sounds like he's got forever to do it. Except he never dies anyway. He <sighs> uh, <laughs> have no space for repentance. I think I forgot to drink to that one. Yay! And also the word of God would have been void! And the great plan of salvation would have been frustrated. Six. But behold, it was appointed unto man to die. Therefore, as they were cut off from the tree of life, they should be cut off from the face of the earth. And man became lost forever. Yea, they became fallen man. Seven. And now we see that but seven. And now ye see by this that our first parents <coughs> were cut off from both cut off both temporally and spiritually from the presence of God. And thus we see they became subjects to follow after their own will. They should be following your, your will, Alma Jr. Because <laughs> then it's perfect. Just ask him. Eight. Now behold, it was not expedient that man should be reclaimed from this temporal death. From that... Wait. For that would destroy Destroy the great plan of happiness. You're gonna just, you're gonna wreck the party. Surprise party. Nine. Therefore, as the soul could never die, and the fall had brought upon all mankind a spiritual death as well as a temporal, that is. They were cut off from the presence of the Lord. It was expedient that mankind should be reclaimed from this spiritual death. 10. Therefore, as they had become carnal, sensual, devilish, by nature, this probationary state became a state for them to prepare. It became a 
probationary state. First 10 is a trip. <laughs> yeah, lots of oxymormons in there. All right. 11. And now, remember, my son, if it were not for the plan of redemption, parentheses, laying it aside in, in parentheses, as soon as they were dead, their souls were miserable, being cut off from the presence of the Lord, and being dead's kind of a bitch too, ain't it? I don't know, I don't remember before I was here, and I probably won't after. Twelve. And now, there was no means to reclaim men from this fallen state, which man had brought upon himself because of Adam and Eve. That's our fault. Because of his own disobedience. Thirteen. Therefore, according to justice, the plan of redemption could not be brought about only on conditions of repentance. Of men in this probationary state, yea, this probationary state, for, yeah, for except it were for these conditions, mercy could not take effect, except it should destroy the work of justice. Mercy has a way of destroying justice, <laughs> if your justice is revenge. <laughs> if it's vengeance, yeah, mercy's bitch, ain't it? Now, the work of justice could not be destroyed. If so, God would cease to be God. Verse 13 is kind of a trip. 14. And thus we see... I didn't... God. God will cease to be God? What is this, kryptonite for God? <laughs> uh, 14. And thus we see that all mankind were, were fallen, and they were in the grasp of justice, yea, the justice of God, which consigned them forever to be cut off from his presence. Ugh. 15. And now the plan of mercy could not be brought about, except that atonement should be made. Therefore God himself atoneth for the sins of the world to bring about the plan of mercy to appease the demands of justice that God might be a perfect just God and a merciful God also. Boy, all that work he had to do just to make God the way you wanted him. <laughs> 16. Now, repentance has to wait. Ah. 16. Now repentance could not come unto man except there were a punishment, which also was eternal as the life of the soul should be, affixed opposite to the plan of happiness, which was as which was as eternal. Which was as eternal also as the life of the soul. That couldn't have been shortened any, could it? Seventeen. Hang on. I should have used my big mug, but it's a little tippy. And I got it right next to my laptop. This is more stable. 17. Now, how could a man repent except he should sin? Well, think about that one. Well, if he's had plenty of guilt trips played on him, 
That might work. How could he sin if there was no law? How could there be a law save there was a punishment? Okay. 18. Now, there was a punishment affixed and a just law given, which brought remorse of conscience unto man. <clears throat> so we didn't have a conscience until then, huh? Nineteen. Now, if there was no law given, if a man murdered, he should die. Would he be afraid he would die if he should murder? If there wasn't that possible threat? Well, I can see that that threat's really doing a great job of stopping homicides. You know? I don't think it stopped any. People just try real hard not to get caught in it, that's all. They keep doing it. 20. And also, if there was no law given against sin, men would not be afraid to sin. Really. 21. And if there was no law given, if a man sinned, what could justice do? Or mercy either? For they would have no claim upon the creature. So now we're ripping off the language of Paul again. 22. But there is a law given and a punishment affixed, like you said earlier. And a repentance granted. Thank you. Oh shit, I better slow down. There's a lot of fucking drinks here. Alright. Which repentance... Mercy claimeth, otherwise justice claimeth the creature, and executeth the law, and the law inflicteth the punishment. If not so, the works of justice would be destroyed, and God would cease to be God. That's the second time you said that. What the fuck? Or are you afraid that might kill your imaginary friend? 23. But God ceaseth not to be God. I'm sure he's relieved. <laughs> I'm being facetious. And mercy claimeth the penitent, and mercy cometh because of the atonement, and the atonement bringeth to pass. Drink to that. I'll just take smaller drinks, because I got one, two, three. Eh. Yeah. Um, bring it to pass the resurrection of the dead, and the resurrection of the dead bringeth back men into the presence of God. And thus they are restored into his presence to be judged according to their works, <clears throat> according to the law and justice. 24. For behold, justice exerciseth all his demands, and also mercy claimeth all which is her own, and thus none but the truly penitent are saved. So start kissing ass. 25. What do ye suppose that mercy can rob justice? Sometimes. I say unto you, nay! Not one whit. I beg to differ. If so, God would cease to be God! current theme here. 
26. And thus, God bringeth about his great and eternal purposes, which were prepared from the foundation of the world. So relax, he knows what he's doing. Even if it doesn't make a fucking bit of sense to us. He's God. Or he's a figment of your imagination. Either way, uh, I'm not waiting around. I'm getting some shit changed now. On my own. And thus cometh about the salvation and the redemption of men, and also their destruction and misery. 27. Therefore, O my son, whosoever will come may come and partake of the waters of life freely. And whosoever will not come, the same is not compelled to come. But in the last day it shall be restored unto him according to his deeds. 28. If he has desired to do evil and has not repented, in his days, that's while he's alive, uh, behold, Evil shall be done unto him according to the restoration of God. He's going to put them together, fix them, and then fuck them up. 29. And now, my son, I desire that ye should let these things trouble you no more, and only let your sins trouble you with that trouble which shall bring you down under repentance. I should have had more beer handy. Thirty. O oh, my son, I desire that ye should deny the justice of God no more. Do not endeavor to excuse yourself in the least point because of your sins by denying the justice of God? But do you let the justice of God and his mercy and his long suffering and have full sway in your heart? That's where the action's at. Fuck the brain. Go right to the heart. And let it bring you down to the dust of Dust and humility. Doesn't that sound wonderful? 31. And now, O oh my son, ye are called of God to preach the word unto, his, unto this people. And now, my son, go thy way, declare the word with truth and soberness, that thou mayest bring souls unto repentance. That the great plan of mercy may have claim upon them. Might. And, and may God and may God and may God grant unto you, even according to my words, because they carry some weight, it's Alma Jr. Amen. That's it for 43. I don't have a whole lot to say about that, except was it wasn't even necessary. It's more repetition. I think he only needed one chapter instead of three. And he didn't even need those because all the shit's been said before. Uh, but he's done bitching out Shevlin, and now we can get to warfare. I believe the next chapter has combat in it. I think the next couple. So, <laughs> ah. peace. The fuck. Out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. And come back, because I think it's going to get almost interesting. Maybe.